the Joe Rogan experience. It's a crazy time right now because there they are there is that measure out there. I I don't I think it's a ballot measure, but it it's is. Uh, yeah, where they're trying to they're calling they want to label lion hunting as trophy hunting. And look, we, there's a there's a guy there who's very passionate. He's been doing a lot of good work. His name's Dan Gates with Colorado for Responsible Wildlife Management. Yeah, yeah. We, for people yeah. listening, don't know what we're talking about. We should say mountain lion. Mountain lion, yeah, yeah. right. Yep. Well, all good. they say mountain lion, bobcat, and then lynx. They which, throw in lynx, which you can't hunt for anyways. Yeah, it's not even to create this idea that yeah, it's not even legal. But they love putting this trophy hunting moniker out there because it's really easy to hate trophy hunting, mm-hmm. right? Which isn't even legal. You can't even. They make it, I read this article from Colorado Sun or something like that, where it's like they want to eliminate people who kill mountain lions and just go cut their head off and just take the, it's like. Who fucking does that? Nobody does that. But nobody does that. people who don't know think, oh my God, that's despicable. Let's we outlaw need to this. serve them some mountain lions. Well, yeah. What the, yeah, what the, what the aim here is that, is tr- the attempt to create a legal term the, the the attempt to create trophy hunting as a legal term. When you have a ballot measure, both sides argue about the language. Like when, when voters go in, what are they going to read? Obviously, you could write any ballot. If you could just write the ballot initiative how you wanted to, you'd win every time. But people got to debate the wording. That's what they did with the wolf thing. Did yeah. you did you read the wolf thing? I never actually I, read it. I couldn't even I couldn't even tell. What was for wolves and what wasn't? Oh, yeah. It's like what the? F- I don't even know yeah. which one I'm against. It was like forcing. It was. It was. Should the state? Does the state need to implement a reintroduction or uh, discovery effort or something yeah. like that? And this is this. They're trying to. The, the debate comes around to can you say trophy hunting? Yeah. In a ballot measure, because if they can, if you can set the precedent, if you can use that it, what a great tool because people are going to say oh i don't agree with that you know i don't agree with that kind of hunting right um which uh w- would have widespread implications because um as demonstrated here with this deer here uh there's a lot of parts of it that i don't throw away and i keep sitting around yeah so is this a trophy or is it an emblem or what the hell is it right but if I kept it, does that mean that I'm now captured under your definition? Right, right, yeah. What is trophy hunting? Yeah. Yeah, and then the bringing in the wolves thing is pretty wild because yeah. there's no precedent. They really don't understand, like— Oh, what, there's with, precedent. With, I mean, with, well, obviously with Montana, yeah, with Fra- Yellowstone. Idaho's Frank but, Church, Yellowstone. But long term, I mean, we've only been since the 1990s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a reason why they eradicated wolves. It's, I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. But when you have ranchers and you have all these people that their living is based entirely on the stock that they have and whether or not they make money enough to keep their farm running or not is depending upon how many animals they bring to market. And then you have wolves and you just bring in wolves. Yeah, well, so there's a if if I got the tinfoil hat on, they want to eliminate hunting. I mean, they, they want to eliminate hunting and ranching. So they don't care about ranchers losing their animals. They would love people just to be 100% consumers, relying on the government so they can control them. They say, here's your food. Here's what you're getting. You're getting it from us. You're not out there hunting it for yourself. They hate hunters. If I was thinking about, you know, the governor of Colorado, which is Polis, his husband is anti-hunting. Yeah, he's an animal rights activist. That's where all this is coming from. So... But if you look at the bigger picture, hunters, they cannot stand. Hunters are usually capable, um, confident, uh, you know, they have a skill set. You can't control people like that. They want people, government wants people they can control. That'll be afraid when they're supposed to be afraid. Wear this mask when we tell you. Get this shot when we tell you. Here's you, you get your food from the store. Here, here it is. And hunters, I think there's certainly an element of that. Hunters are the opposite of that. Yeah, I think there's certainly an element of that, but I think it really all boils down to people that love animals. They yeah, just I don't think want there's. I, I definitely detect that there's a complete disinterest in what hunters think about it, and they think that that for someone to come in and argue um, by doing this wildlife measure, you're impacting 
or like you would like this animal on the landscape for viewing pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, I like certain animals on the landscape for hunting, consumption, eating, whatever. And there's a conflict here where by doing this, you're going to lower my, by increasing your likelihood of having viewer pleasure. You're having a, a potentially really negative impact on my use of natural resources i think that they would look at you as though you don't have a that you're ridiculous or evil or don't have a point in saying that you want to control um you want to limit predation on a resource you rely on and they 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 don't accept that as a reality uh it's it i i haven't encountered a lot of like really really forceful wolf advocates that are serious hunters there is a there's a trend there Mm -hmm. you know the thing that 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 bothered me about the bothered me most about the colorado reintroduction is that while the ballot measure was going forward wolves showed up on their own Mm -hmm. i would have imagined even if i was on and and i'm not anti-wolf but uh when they showed up on their own i don't even know if it's legally possible i would have halted that whole thing because the social friction is so much less if they walk in on their own. Yeah, uh, Diane Boyd, who is the Montana wolf specialist for many years, um, she even came to believe in hindsight that the the Idaho Montana reintroductions ultimately would have been unnes- ultimately were unnecessary, and that you would have gradually achieved the same thing with wolves walking in on their own Mm -hmm. and had a very different societal perception of what was going on. People would look at it as a natural, like a Mm -hmm. a, a natural dispersal, a natural occurrence and not a government action. Right. Yeah. But I think they wanted that pomp and circumstance. Like Polis was there, I think when they released the wolves. Oh yeah. With a big stupid smile on his face. Yeah. They, they want everybody else. All the biologists all had this, like, what are we doing? And he was like, (laughs) yay. Yeah. They wanted, right. They wanted that, you know, and if they knew the truth of how nature balances itself, it doesn't really balance it over, you know, predators kill way too many prey animals because there is no tag limits. They're not like, uh, for example, they talk about trophy hunting lions to or mountain lions to hunt in Colorado. You have to take, it's very regulated. You take this test. So you learn how to identify a, a Tom and a female. You learn how to age a little bit, you know, based on the coloring you learned, you know, what size of track. So there's, you have to go through this before you hunt. And the whole quota system. The quota, and, uh, like, yeah. So the quota where I was in the unit I was hunting was uh, 34 lions. Every night after five, you call in to see what the, where we're at. When I got there, it was at 31. I was there for six days. It was up to, uh, it was 34 was the limit. It was up to 33. So one more lion could get killed and then it's done. So it's not like- What happens if like you kill at the same, you're in the woods, no signal, and someone else kills too until it hits 36? It it could. That's why you check in. There's a window. After five. Yeah. So I think- think And and it'll usually click in like a 24-hour clock. or Maybe they might have been immediate. I don't know. It was, they have, you have 48 hours to turn it in there. And, um, but anyway, point is, you're not over harvesting. You know, the, the estimate- Goes up to as high as seven thousand mountain lions in Colorado, probably maybe maybe five thousand, but in the whole state, hunters are allowed to kill four hundred and fifty, and they've been doing this. And it's not like they're out there killing mountain lions, cutting their heads off, no regard for the numbers, wiping them out. It's so regulated. You know, you don't have to call and and uh, report your deer and elk. But lions are like a whole nother level as far as control. Yeah. And think about that quota system. If you have a horrific snowstorm that pushes all kinds of deer and elk out of high country and like everybody and his brother, like a perfectly timed snowstorm and everybody and his brother is just piling up deer and elk, mm-hmm. they don't go, uh-oh, shut it down. Yeah. They yeah. sit back and they'll go like, wow. Yeah. Mother load. What a harvest. Yeah. yeah. But with lions, they would, they would come in and go, oh, done. Yeah. Yeah. But well, they got a, it's a it's a perpetual motion machine where they've had these they've had a really healthy stable population a uh, minimum harvest. Yeah. That just goes on. It's under 10% but harvest. This is the thing that we should talk about when when it comes to these uh reintroduction of predators, which uh, listen, 
I, I, I fucking love wolves. I mean, if you look out here, I have all these photos of wolves. It's mm-hmm. a long distance photos of wolves. I'm happy that they exist. I think they're fucking amazing. I got, they're I probably got a my big favorite. One on my wall in my living yeah. room. They're probably my wolves favorite animal. Badass. I just think they're the fucking coolest animal of all mm-hmm. time. I really do. I just look in their eyes, photos of them. If I come across photos on my Instagram, I'm always like, holy shit, look mm-hmm. at that thing. They're majestic. Um, but their numbers have to be managed. And as uncomfortable as that sounds for people, wildlife biologists, they have an understanding of the carrying capacity and the resources of the land. They understand how many hunters there are. They understand how many. That's how tags are allocated. Yeah, it's not the, a guessing game. Yeah, it's the way people need to understand this. It's like they've, they've done this for a long time. These people have, you know, painstakingly researched these numbers. They know exactly what they're doing. But when it comes to this game of reintroduction of animals, the first step is they say there's a carrying capacity for the amount of wolves. This is the number. When it gets to that we will agree to open up a season on wolf hunting. But every time that happens, there's lawsuits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's lawsuits to try to stop that hunt. And then the wolves get larger and larger. Yeah. And then you have larger and larger populations. I was looking at a graph the other day where they showed reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone, the amount of elk that existed, and now the amount of wolves versus the amount of elk. And it's pretty shocking. Mm-hmm. It's a giant drop. Mm-hmm. And they're so good at hunting. They're, they're fucking amazing. But hunting wolves is insanely difficult. It's really hard to do. They're really fucking smart. Mm -hmm. They're really aware. Their senses are light years beyond what we can even physically imagine an animal to be capable of doing. In our minds, like we we know that deer could... I remember I was watching an episode of your your show where a bear winded you guys like fucking 500 Mm -hmm. yards or something. Yeah, yeah. Like it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Their, Their noses are fucking amazing. Their senses are amazing. I don't think we really, it's almost like looking at the size of the universe. Like, you know, it's 13 point whatever billion light years across. You don't fucking, that's, yeah, that's yeah. just going in your head. You know, the, the, the kind of power that uh, the senses of a wolf have, mm. I don't think we could even really fathom it. So our, our thought is people are just going to go in there and wipe out the wolves like they did before. That's just ignorance. The way they wiped out well, before Well, at this point, you can go and say that it's just that that's not the reality because right. after the after the delisting in the in the northern rockies after the delisting that didn't happen right right, right. did there's, they there's, ever there's, reach there's, their there's quotas a, yeah they reach quotas they, they every night not every night uh many nights i'll check and y'all get notifications like the other night i got a notification whatever the hell 313 whatever it was unit had hit its quota Region five, it hit its quota. I'm talking about in Montana. Mm-hmm. Whatever region hit its quota. At this point, it's at this point we've hit at. It is a stable. There is a stable population of wolves across a big chunk of range that are managed as a renewable natural resources. They're, they're managed as a big game species. There is no problem. It still gets litigated all the time. But the whole idea that they're going to be pushed back on the onto the ESA, onto the endangered species list, the state doesn't want that. That'd be the worst thing that could happen to the state. Right. They're not going to shoot them into oblivion. Right. It's like we have wolves on the landscape, and you could have the extremes of people that want to live in a world where there aren't any. That's not realistic. Like you lost that fight. You have extremes where people want to live in a world where there's as many as possible and there's no regulation on them which isn't extreme because we could live in that landscape, but right now we're living in a landscape where there are wolves on the ground, there's a healthy population, there's hunting for them, there's a, 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 a equilibrium emerging, and it's very livable. But in Colorado, it's like you got hunters that are, if hunters saw that there was a pathway to finding the extent of it, they would probably feel a lot better. But right now they're like, we're going to lose 50%, of elk, we're going to lose seventy five percent of elk. This is going to get litigated. It could be a hundred years from now. We could have ninety years of full recovery objective. There's still no regulated harvest on wolves, and they're apprehensive. 